As we know, atheists love talking about science. Unfortunately, science for them is a buzzword, and they use it in such a loosey-goosey way that it's often unclear what precisely they're using it to refer to. Now, occasionally they use it correctly to refer to a method or a body of knowledge, but other times they use science to refer to the philosophies of scientism or naturalism, and sometimes they even use it to refer to the natural world itself. Wow, science is so awesome. Now, this is ironic since the philosophy of naturalism actually undermines the scientific method. I'll explain how, but first, a little background reading is in order. It's an article from Robert Epstein, who is a senior research psychologist at the American Institute for Behavioral Research and Technology in California, and it's titled, The Empty Brain. Your brain does not process information, retrieve knowledge, or store memories. In short, your brain is not a computer. Now, I'm not going to read from this article today, but I strongly suggest you check it out. Of course, the link is in the description. I will, however, be reading an article by philosopher Edward Fazer, titled Courts of Isles Phantasms, a review of How to Create a Mind, the Secret of Human Thought Revealed, wherein he discusses the philosophical distinction of concept and phantasm, and how it undermines the model of artificial intelligence given by Ray Courtsville. Again, the link is in the description. A phantasm is a representation of a sensible object, the sort of thing you know introspectively as, say, the mental image of a triangle or a dog's bark. It can have a degree of generality, as when you visualize a triangle without imagining any specific size, or call to mind a generic barking sound. But it will also always have features that not every member of the class possesses. An image of a triangle will be equilateral, scalene, or isosceles, but not all three, and the dog's bark you bring to mind will be high-pitched or deep, but not both. A concept, by contrast, is truly universal. Your concept triangle applies to every triangle without exception, whether equilateral, scalene, or isosceles, acute, obtuse, or right, whether red, green, or blue, large or small. Your concept bark applies to the barks of toy poodles, German shepherds, and Dobermans alike. That they have a universality that phantasms can never have is one reason scholastic thinkers like Aquinas would argue that concepts cannot be identified with phantasms or images. Assume materialism, factor in the extraordinary practical blessings computers have afforded us, what can't they do, and the notion that the mind is just a kind of computer might seem plausible. All it takes to seal the deal is some conceptual sleight of hand. Enter Kurzweil. The core of Kurzweil's position is what he calls the Pattern Recognition Theory of Mind, PRTM. The basic idea is not new. It has antecedents in the connectionist or neural network approach to AI and ultimately in the associationist psychology of the empiricists, but Kurzweil provides an agreeably clear and concise exposition. The key notion of the PRTM is that of a pattern recognition module, a cluster of neurons that fire in response to a stimulus. Nothing in the modules or system of modules themselves, no matter how complex, can provide any universal reference or determinate unambiguous content, that is to say, a content of the sort that true concepts can have. What's more, this distinction between concept and phantasm, which Phaser here levels against Kurzweil's materialistic mechanistic view of consciousness, is actually essential for the scientific method. The scientific method depends on a concept of the event that exists separately from the accidents of its particular instances. Now, contrary to the simplistic narratives of the new atheists, the scientific revolution didn't occur when people suddenly decided to start basing their beliefs on evidence, rather than just basing their beliefs on nothing at all. That's ridiculous, people never did that. The scientific revolution, however, did occur when people realized that countervening influences on physical phenomena could be systematically corrected for. A scientific theory is a conjecture about how physical things operate in an ideal set of circumstances that we may very well never encounter in reality. Now, I can theorize that an object dropped at sea level will fall at 32 feet per second per second, but that's only after the effects of wind resistance have been corrected for, as well as the effects of changes in altitude, as well as the effects of general relativity and quantum mechanics. The fact that I could conceive of the event in a definitive way apart from all these contingencies actually undermines Kurzweil's mechanistic view of consciousness. So I hope you enjoyed my video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.